Hello, Herman here with a video today on how to use nested Active Directory groups together with ClearPass. So let's start with explaining what are nested AD groups. So what we mainly do with uh, groups in Active Directory is we can uh, create a group and then we put users in there. But if you have a very large organization like multinationals, then what can happen is that you create a group, group on the global level and instead of putting in users in that group, you can put other groups. So for example, for the Americas, for APEC and for EMEA region. And then in the region, you can have the different countries and in the country, you can finally have the users. So we have multiple levels with groups in groups. So that are nested AD groups. Let me show you how that is handled normally uh, with uh, ClearPass. So if we have a normal authentication source with AD, I created my instant admin access source here. So we can easily test. So we are checking the Active Directory. We do some role mapping and then in the end we allow access. Uh, let's check in my instant AP. So if I try to use my uh, credentials, I'm logged in and here under the access tracker, we can see uh, what we received here. So from the AD, what we received is, uh, yeah, the groups is just Netherlands security admins. So I don't see the global group. I don't see the regional group. I just see my local group that I'm directly member of. Why did this work? Um, that's because I did a small trick. So here under the role mapping, what I did, if the groups ends with security admins, so basically any group name ending with security admins, uh, then I allow access to the instant AP admin interface. So this is, by the way, a pretty good way of doing it. Uh, it's also uh, very powerful and it's just the issue that it's depending on uh, naming and it's not really checking the hierarchy in the groups. So how can we fix that? Uh, one of the solutions is the traditional way of getting nested DNs from Active Directory. So I created a copy of my AD authentication source and I added here in line number six, an additional filter. And this filter is checking this specific query. And this specific query, if you point that to the AD, the AD will go out and will do a recursive uh, lookup of all the groups that the user is member of and return that as an attribute. So let's apply that. Go back to our service, go into the admin, in the authentication, instead of this one, let's remove it. Let's put in my new nested AD and also in the role mapping, because we are checking here for the specific AD authentication service, uh, the groups, we need to change this as well. And I prepared it already so we can do that. So here we can check if the nested groups equals global security admin, similar like we could do, do with the, uh, yeah, the local groups, um, like you can see, uh, below. So let's save this one. Let's go back to our instant, sign out, sign in again. And here we have the new authentication. And in this new authentication under authorization, what we can see, we still have these. We have the nested DNs here and we have the nested groups. And as you can see, we not only have the local group, but also the regional one and the global one. And this is why we could uh, apply policy based on the global security admins group membership. So there's one big gotcha with this one. And that is that this query, uh, especially in larger ADs, it will put a big hit on the AD. General advice is to uh, avoid this type of query. And there is another solution for that. It's called a uh, token group. So if you search for ClearPass nested token group, you will get to this specific article. And in this specific article, uh, it tells you how to set this up. So basically we are uh, yeah, creating a standard uh, filter. So not the one with the numbers in it. And then we get the token groups attribute from AD, and then we can put that uh, in the clear pass. So how will that look like? So here from the sources, I again created another copy of my AD authentication source, and I created this one, which is based on the article I just uh, enabled it as an attribute so it's easier to see it in the access tracker. So how will this look like? Let's go back to our services, authentication, remove the one, put in the deep nested one authentication service that I just showed. And here in the role mapping, I created another one here for the deep nested again, because the 
names have changed of the authentication source. Now, let's have a look again. Let's sign out. Let's sign in again. And let's see what the access tracker will tell us. So here in the access tracker under the input, what we can see is again, the normal groups. And we can see an attribute here called uh, nested sits. And uh, here we can see some long magic numbers. What you do see is that you will not get the group names because that's taking a lot of performance. You get the security identifiers that are aligned to this group. And now the big question is how do you get to these security identifiers? I found that it's easiest to use PowerShell for that. So with PowerShell, if you do a get AD group, then filter uh, like yeah, star user or star security, then you select the name and the sit from it. You can see that the 187, uh, that's the global security group. The 88 is the EMEA one. The Netherlands is 89. The 513 is the domain user. So that's a group that we didn't see before. And as well here, the four, uh, 545 at the end, that's the users group that we are part of. So we see more groups that we are part of uh, even than with the previous one. So on the other side, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's less convenient because we don't see the direct group names. And we need to check here if you're we, part of this uh, group identifier. Uh, so that's also what I did here in the role mapping. So in the role mapping, I'm checking if the nested uh, sits contains this one with the 87 and the 87, that's the global security group. But you can see the role is applied and it, uh, it just works. And this is uh, much more performant than the previous one where we get the complete list of all the groups that a user is member of. So I hope this was useful. Try to use either on uh, on the partial part of the name, do the mapping. Uh, if that's not possible, then uh, use the security identifier route. And only if that's not possible, you should use the recursive grab of all the group names, uh, like with the nested uh, DNs, because that's for the performance uh, standpoint of your Active Directory, it's very not advisable. So I hope this was useful at this time. Uh, if it is, please let us know by liking this video. Also put your comments below the video and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Herman Robers.